Today we're talking with Paul Bajada, a program manager of global supply and demand planning at Google. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, glad to be here. Where I'd like to start for this conversation, we're going to be talking about what your role is um, as a program manager at Google. But uh, before we do that, one thing I'd like to start with is you mentioned that your program manager role is in demand planning and, and global supply. Can we just you know lay some groundwork uh, for people and for myself who may have no idea what that even means. Like what is demand planning and, and global supply? Definitely. Yeah. I would say the title, it's a little ambiguous. Um, I will say, I think super high level. I make sure we have the right supply to meet demand. Um, a little bit more detail is making sure we have the right quantities at the right place at the right time. That is my role in a nutshell. And, and because you're working on the Nest category, uh, there's like a category of products there, right? When you say something like putting it in the right place at the right time, it's like which organization is selling those products and do they have enough of those products to sell to their customers or consumers? Is that right? Yes. And at least at Google, products are programs. Can you Tell me a little bit more about what do you mean by that when you say like, for us, a product is a program. For example, one program is a security camera. So this security camera is sold across the world to a lot of different customers. So making sure that we make the right products at the right time to meet the demand that's you know constantly changing. Okay, good. So that's a good segue into thinking about uh, this type of program manager role? Because the people we've talked to so far in this role are, are, have been much more on the people side of you know, learning and development um, or recruiting um, within a company, but this is you know, much more technical and external facing. As a program manager, can you tell me a little bit about like, what does the day-to-day -day look like? I'll start off by saying the tactical part is actually the easy part in terms of getting the numbers right. You know, you have a demand for a certain product in a certain place and you put in a supply plan uh, to meet that demand. The hard part is when things go wrong right? You know, it's supply chain, it's consumer electronics, it's COVID, you know, there's a lot of problems right now. And I think, you know, a lot of the day to day is really something changed. And what do we want to do about it? If anything, an example could be like uh, a COVID outbreak in our manufacturing plant, which means that they have to shut it down for a couple of weeks. And that could be 100,000 units that we thought we were going to have and that we don't. Then it's my role to really relay that information um, to the right people and really frame it into a potential decision, you know, to think about, oh, we're not going to have these 100,000 units. What decisions do we have to make to react to that? As you just mentioned, in a program manager role, you are, you're often acting as a liaison. You're often working with lots of different stakeholders, different parties. Who are those people you're interacting with and, and what does that look like for you? Well, I would say the main functions that I work with, one is ops in terms of the supply chain, kind of including that is like logistics of moving it around. And then on the other side, there's product development, thinking about the next generation of products and you know how do we bridge the current generation to the next generation there's finance obviously you know to help us think about financial implications of different decisions there's sales or sales ops that really help us uh, with the demand and how that's changing the one that you mentioned in there that i find very interesting is thinking about the product development team who are thinking about new products how would your role interact with somebody like that Yes. So uh, I think a good example is when there's a delay in a product of the next generation. And when that happens, that means we need to extend the life of the current generation. And sometimes it's not really clear when this new product is going to be ready. You know, there's different decisions that we need to make about, all right, how much buffer do we have on the current product to avoid risk of this future product. Um, and then it always gets down all the way to like the materials level, right? You know, maybe like a chip, for example, will work in the previous product, but for whatever reason, product development thought, hey, let's use a new chip, thanks. <laughs> so then it's like, oh, well, the product, that one material is not compatible. So, um, I mean, that's going off the deep end, but you know, that's kind of like where the conversation has to go um, because it, 
has so many different implications. And there'll be these forums where everyone comes together, you know, huge forum, multiple functions, all the functions I laid out. What's really key is for us as, you know, the program manager of the supply side to frame it up. Hey, we have a decision to make. Here's what's happening. Here are the implications and here are some options. And I would say, you know, that is like, you know, the, the biggest challenge and, you know, the most important to make sure that the senior leadership has all the information they need to make the best decision. That's helpful. Like j even just that one example, it just highlights for me that a, a lot of the work that you do might be behind the scenes, really looking at granular details of, of data and making sense of all of it. But then the other part of it is taking that data and learning how to communicate it in an effective way to people who are collaborators in different roles or even higher level leadership within your company. Totally. And you know, you kind of have to know a little bit about each function to be able to make those connections and kind of just like spitball solutions. What part of that do you think you're very good at? I think what I bring to the table is the the big picture thinking and the presentation to cross-functional meetings. You know, that was something that I noticed early on was that we would go to these meetings and we wouldn't have the right information or it was like way too complicated or we had multiple ways of kind of saying the same thing. So that's really what I'm working on now is, you know, we want to be efficient in our meetings, not just spending all this time kind of clarifying things or looking up things in the middle of a call, which is like the worst thing ever, but really, you know, having that perfect presentation where we're thinking about the biggest implications of whatever just changed and making it clear kind of what the decision is and also, you know, having options on that decision and the implications of each of those options. And a lot of the time, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to put everything onto like one page. So, you know, I think that kind of idea, it's not revolutionary, but it's like, you know, have your back pocket slide where, you know, it's like you have all your extra information. So you're just thinking about, okay, I'm thinking about senior leadership. Instead of putting the supply on a boat, maybe we can put it on a plane and then I'll get there faster. But then that has, you know, profit margin implications, but it's Black Friday. So if we don't do it now, we're going to, we're going to miss the boat. Well, bad analogy, but we'll like lose out on a lot of revenue. So it's like thinking about all these different angles is really important to, you know, be ready ready for that call so that, you know, when you get these questions, you know, you'd be able to answer them quickly. I like that. And that's interesting. As you said before, you need to have a little bit of a knowledge of, of a lot of different functions. Do you mm -hmm. feel like you're having to play that role of thinking through all of those implications or you're interacting with the people who are in those functions so that you can ask the right questions, get the information you need to then be informed about all of the implications? Yeah, no, it's, it's all about, uh, the partnering to get the information. It's that ability to make that connection. The more you kind of know about each function, the easier it is to kind of know like, oh, I think that might have an impact on, you know, X, Y, Z. Let's reach out and see what they think. One of the things I'm thinking about too is, you know, when, when somebody is thinking of making a career transition into something different, one of the things that's really difficult is looking at a company and understanding where you fit in a given role. So if I look back at your career trajectory, all of your job titles were something different than program manager, right? How did you know that this was the type of role that you would be a good fit for? Yeah, it's a good question. What really helped me is, you know, knowing what are my strengths? I think that's the biggest thing. And I think what I, you know, I mentioned earlier about having that, you know, seeing the big picture of the of a whole business and also communication is kind of what I bring. When I'm looking at new roles, is thinking about something where, you know, I can do that. And I looked at a few different roles before I landed on this one. And this was the one where, you know, I felt I had, you know, a lot to bring to the table and you know, from talking with the hiring manager, I kind of was able to discover that they had some issues there where I excelled. And that's really what made it work on both sides. So two more questions for you. We've talked about your trajectory so far and kind of like how, how you got here. 
I think one of the other things that's interesting to think about is like, where might you go after a program manager, a program management role? Like, what do you see as maybe the next role up? Would it be a senior program manager or would it be a pivot to something different? I see it as a pivot to something different. I'm passionate about analytics and strategy. I'm pretty clear that I like the marriage of those two and, um, you know, moving within like my own team, what that requires is more, I would say, just very specific functional knowledge. To be honest, I'm pretty new at, you know, supply planning. I only have six months experience, but, you know, it's like I'm, other people have 10 years and it's like, wow, like the way that they're able to just kind of like react to certain things is incredible. Um, because they have experience. And, you know, I don't want to just go off the deep end on that. I want to be somewhere where, you know, I can stay at this kind of like um, big picture thinking without getting like knowing all those super deep details. So I can't tell you exactly what that is, but again, it's this marriage of analytics and strategy, staying within the business, but bi still like big on data is really where I want to go as my next step. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that. It's interesting because you're like, I don't, I don't want to go off the deep end and go too far into the, the weeds of the details. Yet I like this marriage of analytics and like high level strategy. And I think someone could argue, well, analytics is like really in the details of things, right? Yeah. And I feel like, you know, you don't need to be in the details to do analytics. It's really just, you know, we have these type of decisions that we need to make. What is the appropriate data to get us there? And at some point, you know, someone's going to have to be in the details, but it could be like, hey, we just need to know when the supply is coming in. We just need something that can just match the supply and demand well. And that could be, you know, basically as far as you go. Um, I, I've seen some roles that are kind of like that. And it's like, mm, that, that, that sounds pretty cool. Like, I don't have to be in like the coding or formatting some data visualization, but I, you know, I can just like, hey, let's move forward on that. And then some other team builds that. That, that to me would be an awesome place to be. I appreciate you, you sharing that distinction. And it's been fun to talk to you about this role because like I said before, some of the other program managers that I've spoken to already are much more on this kind of people side within a company. And so even though someone could have the same title program manager like that, it just the scope of what somebody could be doing in that role is just so vast. Yeah, no, it's incredibly broad. I think Google is guilty of as well. Like everyone's a program manager, it feels. <laughs> it's like, well, what does that mean exactly then? So yeah, it definitely, you definitely need to peel back a few layers to really understand what people do. Well, thank you for helping us do that. And uh, let's end with one question. I'm a big proponent of, of connecting in your career. And so I'd love to ask you in the year to come, who are you interested in connecting with? I think I'm interested in people like, that, you know, have some sort of passion for something, not just a general, hey, I want to work for Google. Like, can you tell me more? It's like, that's, you know, that's a little too, too broad there. But, you know, if someone said like, hey, I want to go into supply chain and it sounds super interesting. I want to hear about it. You know, that's the type of person that I would, you know, want to connect with. I think something else that's really important is the kind of the authenticity behind it. One of my pet peeves is, when people reach out to me and, you know, it's clear they're trying to use some sort of marketing strategy or something. So the more authentic, the, the better, because I know, you know, people starting off, it's hard. And, you know, I was there too. And, you know, people reached out to me and I was so grateful and, you know, I want to give back. So, you know, the more that you can just be yourself and, you know, show me kind of what you're looking for and show that you're being, you know, like you have some focus. That's really what is going to get me to want to connect with you. I love that. I'll always take a plug for authenticity <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Like it, it is really hard and there's a lot of rejection when you're reaching out to people. Not everybody's going to going to want to talk to you, but the more you can show up and be honest about what it is you truly want to learn, I think that the better off you'll be, at least as evidenced by uh, if someone wants to reach out to you, for sure. Yeah, I, I just can't say enough, like how hard it is when you're first starting, but you know, it, there's going to be a lot of people that don't respond to you. But I, what I would say is like, you know, don't give up. It's not necessarily you or what wording you use in your thing. It's just people are busy. And sometimes, you know, it's 
it's hard to make the time to do these type of things. And I think everyone wants to do it. So, you know, my final advice is like, just don't give up, like, just keep trying. Don't think that your message is potentially wrong. Just be authentic, be focused and um, good things will come. Awesome. That's a great note to end on. Well, I want to thank you again for sharing your experience with me today. It was definitely helpful and keep me posted on what's next. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Jenny.